It is a staple of DVD comp, and I am not going to be surprised in the slightest if we see it coming out in full force. And who knows? Maybe someone Ooh. here is going to be able we to uh, some... pull out some tricks and tricks. I, we had a quick glimpse at everyone's builds, and I see some fascinating things. Now, killers that run lethal pursuer, believe it or not, are not crazy. They simply want to have the best possible chance at getting the best possible... Uh, chase going on early on and that can set the tone for the rest of the game uh, This killer has perfect information of what everyone is doing Excellent life from Nancy that unfortunately does not give enough distance to dodge this attack and she's in a bad spot She's in a really bad spot. There's no come corner. This is a very quick hook happening this early and the sad part is There's not much to do against this. This is nurse yeah, I mean, they did the right thing. They went to edge map, and a lot of people always wonder why do survivors go to the edge of the map against Nurse? And it's kind of like if you've ever played chess, putting a knight on the edge of the board because it limits the nurse's movements in some really unique ways. I also want to point out here a score event that just popped up where you saw yep. a damage generator after hook that there is, in fact, a scourge hook pain resonance in play. I mean, you did not even need to see the score. The fact that we had a hook right next to the down survivor, but somehow the killer decided not to go for it, already tells you that they went out of their way to get that. That is Kyle O'Brien. Uh, everyone should apply on that gen. This Nancy has a target painted on her back, and she needs to do her best around that. <laughs> Good luck. I don't think this is easy. Yeah, I mean, it's impossible to really do much. We do see the down underneath the pallet. Almost Wait. made very personal. Maybe this could be a setup, and sure Wait. enough, there's the mag, but they aren't no. able to get oh. it! No, okay, the, the idea here wasn't crazy. Believe it or not, or Nancy, I'm pretty sure, has the perk Power Struggle and Flip Flop. I'm pretty sure that what they were going for here is actually a very sound and solid strategy, where after a few seconds, Nancy would literally be unhookable. Unfortunately, it seems like the... Mech player thought the pallet save could occur, and he was just a slight inch away from happening. Uh, a real huge shame. Also, this ace has been useless for a few seconds, having been hit by eruption. Being completely... My god, what a blink. Completely unable to do anything for a few seconds, and this nurse has an insane grip on this team already. Yeah, I mean, and we're seeing the nurse just capitalize off this snowball pressure, not wanting to give these survivors a single inch, slugging out the ace, slugging out the mag. You know they're going to tunnel out the Nancy too, and it comes down to the Quinton yeah. to somehow bring it all back unless there's an unbreakable on one of these down survivors. I was expecting Nancy to perhaps use the life that she seemingly had. Oh my god, you cannot use life if you're cut in half. She will be unceremoniously tunneled here. And uh, yeah, lucky us, we're at four gens, huh? Believe it or not, it's not time for the survivors to give up. It is entirely possible that on the other side, their killer is doing even better than this, somehow, if it's even possible. So any gen they get done, any progress they do at all could be the difference that makes the tiebreaker go their way. So survivors, despite this grim start, cannot, cannot give up just yet. They need to get any gens done. Yeah, I mean, that's the big biggest combat. thing we say about all the time. Uh, with COTF, we get run a lot of data on every single match that is played here. And one of the things that we pointed out time and time again, it's not how many survivors escape against Nurse, it's how many gens you get completed. And that is always the fact of the matter. And I think we're going to see that here today as well, as I'm imagining both sides, they're going to 4K with Nurse. The question is, how many gens do each side complete? And this Nurse is not wanting to give them a single inch whatsoever. Looks like she looked up to the sky for a split second, doing a quick little prayer, but honestly, I, I think God is on your side, Nurse. You're doing fantastic. I would not want to be in the Suave team right now. This looks like an insane amount of pressure, some of it alleviated by the deliverance on, on Meg, which allowed her to unhook herself and start doing gems again, but this next chase could be very short. Yeah, I, I don't think Nia's in the match, but she's definitely locking down proud on the nurse today. As uh, you know, the entity is pleased with the death and destruction that they're seeing here on Father Campbell's Chapel. And nurse just once again going for that slug out on the ace, not wanting to give these survivors any moments of respite. Seeing those scratch marks, and it looks like it is on an injured survivor. I think that is the Meg who is still broken after that deliverance mm -hmm. play. Yeah. Uh, the trade-off of using Deliverance and unhooking yourself is that you cannot be healed for a whole 60 seconds. And 
And that means that even if she had a medkit, which she doesn't, could not have used it during this time, it is a brutal, brutal place to be. And I think our killer would rather leave the A's on the ground and secure a second poke on someone to make sure that they have zero chance to come back. A little bit of a frustration wiggle there. <laughs> what, what would you call that little camera shake that killers do when they know they messed up? Yeah, it is just like that the shake of disapproval. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> Shaking my head, trying to like yeah, clear out yeah. the thoughts. And we saw the Meg try the flashlight there, but just not no. enough distance. I do want to point out here, though, that was the longest chase we've seen this entire game. Mick doing I know. a really great job of using line of sight blockers to uh, trip up the nurse and double back. Yeah. There are unfortunate uh, times when even a chase this long against nurse will mean very little. And this nurse has overperformed to the point where she can afford this kind of chase right now. And unfortunately, the other two survivors had to pick up the person from the ground. They could not be sitting on gens this whole time. And I wouldn't be surprised if this nurse somehow manages to, to keep us at three gens for the foreseeable future. This looks tough. This looks tough to play as. Yeah, I mean, I will say that the survivors did get a gen during that period of time, so definitely not making waste of the time that the Meg gave them. The question is now whether or not they're A, going to be able to unhook the Meg, and B, even if they do, will it matter? We see Ace trying to come in, and I think another reason why we're seeing the nurse slug them out is I think they are under the assumption that Ace is the del uh, deliverance player, but now mm -hmm. we saw from Meg that they aren't. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, at this point, they're just going to slug out the next survivor that they have on the ground, go for the 4K, and that's gonna be that. If I might, if I may go for an alternate analysis of that situation, if you know that Meg has deliverance, it's almost a safe assumption that she also has unbreakable. Yeah. Oh my goodness. The disrespect. So if you know that your one unbreakable is on someone else, slugging the ace does seem like a good idea. And honestly, seeing the results, who can argue? This was absolutely the way to play this. The the micro and macro from the stars are literally out of this world. This has been insane. Yeah, absolutely. We see Quentin back here trying to complete this generator. Actually, has on three cylinders, so pretty far along. However, as mentioned earlier, Colorblind Eruption going to be bringing that down by 2.5% on the initial kick, 200% per second thereafter. And if they get the down, it's going to be an additional 10% and potential incapacitation on the survivor on it. I mean, unless they complete that gen now, that is going to be that. It's insane. On a match that looks this promising for nurse she still has to also fight it's not just good enough to get four kills you want to get four kills with us the, the 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 shortest sorry with the least amount of generators completed yeah so it's crazy how tense this still is and i think that's the biggest thing why we're seeing nurse not really commit the chases because there's a little <laughs> bit concerned they understand that the other nurse is going to probably get a 4k as well in fact the game might already be over for all we know and so yeah. now the nurse is playing around the idea of i need to restrict as many gens as possible and we see colorblind popping off in the distance we see back-to-back -back notifications which we just did that is two survivors on that one gen yep that's Pretty crazy, yeah, safe assumption. And all of you watching at home need to remember that both games are played simultaneously. The killer from one side, the killer from the other, are playing at the same time. So it's very possible that this killer is on comms or receiving information from their team as to what they have to do. Maybe at some point they'll decide that the result is good enough. Until then, they have to assume that they need to get the best possible result. Very nice play from Quentin, who honestly just got lost somewhere. Yeah, just absolutely disappeared into the ether. For all I know, and I wasn't paying attention when they are in chase before, but it could have been mm -hmm. a lucky break potentially. But we yeah, also yeah. see what looks to be a noise notification on the other side of the carnival. <laughs> this is crazy. They want to <laughs> they want to do two different gems that are as far apart as it gets in a map of this size, and the nurse is keeping up with them. It is ridiculous. They did the gen closer to Shag. Could they possibly get to one gen? That, believe it or not, might be the difference. That might be what sets this team apart. And our nurse, despite the really good start, might actually feel like they're underperforming. Yeah, no, I mean, that's the insane part. The nurse in any, you know, way, shape, or form is playing amazing. But in a competitive scenario where every single generator counts, every single moment counts, the nurse here is probably pulling out the hair, trying to find this yep. last survivor. And this fact of the matter is, so is the gen split here is still really, really strong for survivors. They might somehow manage to do more gens. It is crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Yeah. And the, I mean, the, you can win, but this might not be a good enough win.
Yeah, well, I mean, and we're seeing a skill check miss there. That's 10% off the generator for the skill check miss. But based on how far along that gen is, I wonder that was if that's bait. just bait. That was bait, yeah. You can, if you are unaware, if you're on a generator and you want to blow it up as quickly as possible, you can literally spam your spacebar constantly. And the moment you get a skill check, it will blow up even sooner than normal. And it is a good way to wake up against Freddy. And it is a good way sometimes to take attention away from a teammate um and onto yourself if you're in a good spot it might have been exactly what happened here honestly they have set up a boon and these two warriors are the last remaining survivors of their team and they are not giving it up it's so tense i oh it's been awesome seen something like this yeah no i mean it really shows what you can do with really well trained survivors who know every single nook and cranny of this map know how to draw the killer's attention from one side to the other and i mean we're seeing just how powerful even two survivors left in the match can be mm -hmm. depending on where the generators are if this is a three gen there's no mm -hmm. question to ask it's done and yeah. dusted but with 100%. how the gens were split throughout this match as they're completing them it really does put the these survivors in a really favorable position it's not just that. We've been watching this nurse's point of view the entire time, and I could swear she played that flawlessly. And it's really hard to understand when exactly she started to make a mistake, or when it's exactly things went wrong. Definitely that is a small mistake in chase that will delay. Uh, the boon has been her to our left, but it needs to be ignored. She cannot afford another gen to go with this grip on the game. You, oh, excellent play from Quentin. We have a bit of a spectator bug. Uh, don't worry about this. I'm sure she will. Oh. Never mind. Uh, how to reset? Yeah, you know, just the manual reset. Just need to sometimes swing your weapons, like turn it off, turn back on again. Kind of yeah, yeah, resets yeah, yeah. the mind of every nurse. You know, yeah, it's what it is. We've all been there. We've all been there. We have. That seems to me like a miss skill check as well. Yeah, it did seem that way. I wasn't paying attention if it was a miss skill check or call a Brian notification, but basically we saw no aura. I'm gonna say miss skill check. Maybe Ace just trying to leave a little bit early here in order to avoid the chase. And Ace trying to use the rock here. There's another thing that survivors, especially those who play against Nurse, know all too well. Tight loops around kind of awkward obstacles like rocks or Z walls <laughs> can really mess up the Nurse and their blinks. Yep. So the reason why, for those of you unaware, is that the nurse cannot blink to your exact location. She cannot blink inside you. That means that if you occupy a tight spot, she will instead fail a blink. And we have seen that happen a couple of times, but not this time. This time we had a perfect follow-up. Um, I don't know what is Quentin thinking, but they have done really well. If they hide long enough, another two minutes, and that person will bleed out on the ground, and maybe they can get hatched. Why would yeah. you do at this point if you were Quentin? I mean, realistically speaking, so this is where it gets a bit interesting. We saw a few different scenarios of things like this where survivors can actually use bleed out to their advantage, but normally it's when you know where Hatch is. And some other right. comp events, you know, Hatch will yes. be decided that it's spawned at Shaq, for example. But we see here, Quentin and Ace either using Unbreakable or getting the pickup, yep. not even worried whatsoever. So I'm thinking that they could either go one of two ways of this. If they stealth out, wait for the bleed out, or yep. they do exactly what they're doing, go for the pickups when Nurse goes to check for gens, and they understand they can't really just sit back in Shaq because then they risk Quentin doing gens. So they pick up the ace, they disperse, <laughs> they extend another chase, and maybe they get some more work on the gens. I think these survivors know at this point that this last gen is make or break. Can I take a minute to point out just absolutely how on point this Quentin has been? Goodness gracious, those double backs. I am speechless. He has played ridiculously well. Forcing the nurse to second guess herself and brute force every single one. It does look like you were right and we have a lucky break user. Um, because maybe he got some of that lucky break back from healing. Yep, yeah, no small blood, no scratch marks. Oh, the battle of the mine. Okay, that was a bit of an interesting back and forth. An eruption triggered revealing the location of Ace. This might be it. One yeah. good uh, blink to reveal his location and not lose him, and it's over. He's healthy, however. Yeah, and so that's going to be the question of the day. Can the nurse find the ace by the time he gets away? And we do see scratch marks here, so nurse uh -oh. has at least some inclination of where the ace might be. We're seeing them fade away. I think they're heading towards Quinton, thinking that the nurse was going to uh -oh. check over in Carnival. We saw them there over by the LT wall, and I don't think they're going to have enough time to get Quinton off the ground. Nope. 
In fact, we saw Quentin reveal by the yellow tooth add-on that reveals survivors while they are being healed. Funnily enough, it can also be used while people are on the ground. It could have been really good. Honestly, it could have been the start of another 20 minute bleed out session, but nope, it looks like this is gonna be it. Yeah, these competitors not wanting to give up at all, hoping that their results will claim them victory and grant them a showing at finals. We saw the ace with the dead heart at the pallet, trying to get a little bit of extra distance, but yeah. I think that there will be it. I think we're seeing a 4K here for Petroleum's Nurse. I have to say, if you go back and watch those last two blinks, notice the angle that the nurse found, the, the precise place where she blinked to see as much as po possible around every corner to not have to guess and instead just make sure you have the sword where you want them. That is what sets really good nurses apart from your average nurse. Incredible performance. Yeah, absolutely. And I did get a quick update in regards to the other match. It looks like it resulted in a 2k8 hook for Cynic's wow. Killer, meaning that Petroleum's Nurse will walk away with the 4k and bring Petroleum to the finals of the NA Dead by Daylight Community Cups. And all of that on a below average killer that doesn't get that many kills on the kill rate. It's very impressive. Very impressive. Yeah, absolutely.